Hey guys, this is a demo um, or tutorial so you can see how I do my, my maps. Hopefully this is helpful to you. What you're looking at is a large keep that I'm working on. There's a little bit, end up being like five or six levels. I've completed two of those levels for the most part. There's still more refining that I do in my process, but I'm gonna walk you through um, building an entire level. So we're gonna, we're gonna build level three today. And um, what I'm gonna do is uh, use the background, um, level two is the background to really shape how I want level three to go. Because this is a keep, the bottom level has very, very thick walls. And you'll see I have a technique for creating thick walls uh, by using um, walls from the Forgotten Venture, uh, Forgotten Adventures um, asset pack and, and some of their um, floor textures to establish um, a thicker wall. Now, in this case, because it's key, those walls get thinner and thinner as you go up. And so I am attempting to replicate that concept here. This is the third level, so the walls will be uh, just a single um, wall thick versus what you see in the background there. Um, I will point out a couple of things here. I do use specific hex codes for the color. So even though I'll select a wall, I'll change its color, sometimes a lot. I'll do the same thing for floors. If I want that floor to match, for example, you see the gray, charcoal gray floor here. That is not the natural color of that floor. I changed the hex code um, in the color picker down below to make it darker. I do that for a couple of reasons. One, I want the, um, the palette, the color palette to be in general agreement. I don't want anything to look weird next to something else. And I also do it because I want to be able to go back and edit those hex codes later in the code. So I want to be able to open up in a, in a you know, code editor, the dungeon draft file, and then do a find and replace for that code. Because I may want to reskin this later. Anyone who follows my Patreon knows my general thesis is I want to create maps that are that are very usable, not only a lot of time spent in the map for your players, but that you can reuse as a DM forever after and just making modifications or using a new skin or changing a room out or you know introducing a teleport room where there used to be a dungeon um, in order to create the storylines that, that you want to create. Um, so, so yeah, I am using custom hex codes. I'm trying to make sure all of these walls are using them. You may not notice the difference in the color, but it doesn't really matter just as long as the code is custom. What you're seeing me do here is just try to figure out how is this level going to be laid out. Think of it, I have an idea that I want bedrooms up here. Um, I'm going to want maybe a library up here. I'm going to want maybe a, I don't know, a ballroom or something uh, social. Um, and I'm just figuring out, based on the constraints of the room below, how, how I want to lay it out. And I'll end up drawing some of these walls, and then I'll end up making changes later. And what today is about is not going to be fully furnishing, like you see in the level below. I just want to show you how to build the skeleton. And, and then once you've got the skeleton built, furnishing it's pretty easy. Right now we haven't laid down any floors or anything. I'm just trying to solve problems around wall layout and where I want things to go. I'm not going to develop the interior of this level just for sake of time. I'm just showing you kind of the exterior and we'll go and I'll show you some kind of custom things that I do here. I've decided that I want these to be some bedrooms down below. And so I'm slowly making decisions as far as, you know, where windows are going to go and, and other things. Because this is the top level, I want to add some more windows. Notice I'm allowing light with these window placements, I'm trying to approximate based on the level below where these windows are going to go.
kind of fast forward a little bit. Um, because we're on this level, you can see down into what is essentially a two-story entryway. So we're looking down on the roof. Um, I used some roof tiles and then I changed the color of one of them. By the way, you notice I'm getting rid of shadows. I also do not use the built-in shadow effects that Dungeon Draft brings with walls. Uh, I think the shadows look really weird. I'm going to show you what I think is a better way to do shadows around walls here in a little bit. You can see into the level below that my shadows are a little bit more dramatic and they tend to create a better space. Um, yeah, I just, with that roof tool, I just uh, changed the color so that you could see one side is shaded. And now what I'm doing is I'm trying to decide on the interior. How do I want those walls to be shaped? And you'll notice those fireplaces. Those fireplaces go through the entire keep, starting at the at the basement or at the uh, at the level one. Um, and and so I want to maintain those where they're at. And you'll see me bring those fireplaces up through the entire building. And so I'm going to use those as anchor points. And I'm trying to decide how the walls are going to be placed around those fireplaces, just so it looks symmetrical. Looks like somebody designed it. And I'll jump ahead a little bit. So you can see. So there, here's without looking at the level below. You'll notice also I, I put uh, some black circles. Those are just rugs that are colored dark black. And I snapped to grid and I put those where the... the the fireplaces were below just so I can make sure that I'm not losing my place and I want to make sure that you know I'm covering those um, or getting those fireplaces anchored in in the right spots. Here I am I went down to the level below and I grabbed the hex code that I used on the floor. You notice that gray tile is no longer gray. It's, it's like a it's a charcoal now because I changed the color because I want my whole keep to have agreement in its color palette. Which doesn't say you can't change that, but that's just a design decision you want to make. And now I'm just going to lay out the basic rooms. I'm going to end up changing the flooring in some of these rooms. But this just gives me an idea of how the rooms are going to block out. Notice I left ample space in my hallway so that it's not just a single square, but it, it's going to feel larger for a, a token moving down the hallway. It's not going to feel as, as confined as, as a single, you know, a single cube. And I'm always thinking about how are my players going to be moving through this map? How are they going to be fighting in this map? Um, how are, you know, maybe they end up making this their base someday, you know, how, where would they live inside of this map? What rooms would they typically choose? And I'm just kind of assessing now that those floors are laid, how, how do I want my rooms to change? I decided at this point, rather than having a hallway here, I want to turn this into the library. So now I'm going to start manipulating my walls to make space for that. Always remind, remembering that, I, that my fireplaces are my anchor points. By the way, you can hover over a, a wall control. Notice I'm on edit points mode. You can hover, hover over it and press delete, and it'll delete that point. It can be really helpful when you're trying to you know, rejigger your walls. I'm gonna kind of move ahead a little bit. Now, I want to uh, create the fireplaces themselves. And you'll notice I don't use a, an asset for these. I, I build them from basic building blocks. In this case, I'm going to use um, a tile 
tool um, or texture and I'm going to create the illusion of a piece of, of a fixture, in this case a fireplace. But you'll see I'm going to use some elements to build it. And I do that because you, you're not always going to find the elements that you want in the asset libraries. But there's enough raw materials that you can, you know, if you learn a couple of these tricks, you can really build whatever you want within reason. If you've seen my galleon or my mansion, you've seen this technique used a lot. The galleon has a ton of invented assets just using some of these building blocks. I'm going to jump ahead here. Uh, here I've, I've just drawn polygons at level 300 because I'm going to put things underneath those polygons like, like fire and firewood. So if I stay at level 300, it gives me enough space to draw on top of these, which you'll see why. But it also gives me space to put things underneath them as well. And you can see the fireplaces are going into both rooms. I think it's pretty common architecture for medieval architectures. They, they try to put fireplaces in the interior and then um, heat multiple rooms with them. Here again, I'm trying to decide how to put a fireplace in. At this point, I've realized that I want the fireplace to be have a wide berth here in the in the uh, library. So I've landed on giving it a nice big space and then having a, a smaller fireplace in the adjacent room. And I'm gonna do the same thing down here, decide how that fireplace might go into this room. I'm hitting backspace. I realized that I don't need to make this particular one at an angle since it's already in a pocket. Do some little adjustments with edit points and now I've got the basic foundation of my fireplaces ready to go. Now before I keep going in the fireplace, there's something that's bothering me and it's that that gap between this level and the level below it. I know that I'll end up exporting these as, as transparent PNGs and, and they're, they're inevitably maybe um, a situation where this level is sitting on top of levels below it and I don't like that you can see through into the lower level. And so I'm going to experiment here with putting walls down and then I'm going to realize how difficult that's going to be to support because I'll have two walls running in parallel to each other and I'm going to want to cover the outermost wall with the floor tool but I'm going to be forced to do it at level 700 and that's just going to make it look like one big thick wall. Notice the strategy I used down below. I'm grabbing that hex code so that that's the same And I'll start to place it. And, I, and now I'm not snapping to grid anymore. And I'm realizing this is going to be a real pain. And it's not going to look good.
So now what I realize is I'm still going to have that wall visible down below. All I really need to do is put on level 100 that floor texture. And now that looks like maybe there's a ledge or, you know, in fact, I'm just seeing down to the level below. I can even play around with some perspective and do some lines later that make it look like I'm just looking down a, a wall. But for right now, this gives me a much more clean look so that if this level does end up somewhere on a map, looking down at levels below it, it'll look a lot cleaner. And I can decide to cover up those windows later. I can do a lot of things. But I am going to take one more step here just to make sure that it's clear that that's a level lower. And I'm going to bring out my sh my shadow path. This is a path that's available in um, Forgotten Adventures assets. There's other dedicated tools for this or asset packs just for shadows that are really, really great. But you can see I'm just... First of all, I'm trying to go the wrong direction. Okay, now I'm just laying down shadows under those walls so that you can readily tell that there's a, there's a distance separation between the two. It's a really simple tool. Notice I've got it fading in and fading out. That's an option for your your uh, all of your path tools. You can have them fade in, fade out. You can have them shrink and grow in and out. I use all of those options very heavily. Now the next thing I'm doing, which may seem like a small thing, but you'll notice I'm going around that lip with another shadow path. Now I may end up changing my mind later, but this is an example of how I make materials look more finished and three-dimensional. I've decreased the shadow path down to a very small width and I'm going a specific direction around so that it looks like that is you know, actual um, material, like durable material. And you're going to see me use that same concept here to finish up the uh, fireplaces. Now I'm just trying to assess how I want my interior rooms to go. Now, one of the building blocks I use heavily in Forgotten Adventures is the stair set. If you just type stair into your keywords, you will find uh, these tons of stuff in here. You'll see me use more of these here later. But I'm going to use a lot of these quarter circle and half circles to basically at level 100, so ground level, underneath, this will be where the fireplace fire will sit. And I'll resize them and get them right into the right spot. I'm not snapping the grid here, I'm just eyeballing where I think they look best. Again, this is level 100 because I'm going to have stuff go in between this and the and the bricks above it. I also have um, shadows turned off. So I just don't like how they look. And these things are on the ground, so I want them closer to the ground. Now here's an example of what I showed you earlier. And this helps create the illusion that this is an actual manufactured piece. Notice I'm just creating the illusion of, by the way, these are all individual paths. I'm stopping the path and then starting a new one instead of trying to round the corner. See, there's a, a lip. And I'm gonna replicate the same thing for all the other ones. Now, if you type in castle, you get these fun little things. It's a nice finished looking piece of brick. It's not too far off the color palette. It's not perfect. But 
for purposes of creating a chimney. It's nice, it's quick and dirty. I'm not snapping a grid here. I'm just putting them where they seem to make the most sense. You can see I added deeper paths to a lot of these. Um, and I, I went the other direction just to make it look like there's, um, you know, different elevations in terms of the brickwork. If you type in fire as a keyword, you can find these uh, fireplace logs. These are at level 200, so they're above the piece below it. And you'll notice I'm drawing a lip here because, you know, fireplaces tend to have those. You don't want embers getting out on your wood floor. And I'm just eyeballing with the path tool. And you can see it's set at a very low width. And I'm just putting little points along the way. It doesn't have to be exact. Now I'm going to do a search for torches. And there's a torch that if I also put it at level 200 set for over, I can put it right on top of that firewood and it's a great little fire effect. I forgot a couple of my smaller smaller ones. There's another asset pack. You can find it on Cartography Assets, I think is the website. And it's called Clouds. And it's my favorite asset pack. And it's really simple. There's just eight assets in it. But they're colorable. They're already semi-transparent, although you can make them more transparent. You can spam them on top of each other. And you can create everything from clouds to, to gas to, in this case, just dirt. If you've ever seen my ghost galleon my ghost ship i make the uh, the deck look wet and gross using kind of a gray green color but yeah it's just called clouds now i'm putting wood floors in but you notice that i made it slightly darker i am using a custom hex code again because i want to change these later potentially and right now i'm i'm going with uh, zero rotation, but you'll see in a little bit, I'm gonna rotate some room so that the wood is going horizontal instead of vertical. Again, just analyzing my rooms and seeing how I want them to be laid out. This is where I'm going to try to figure out where doors go. This doors help define what these rooms will be, if they're going to be a bedroom or not. I will rotate my doors depending on where I want the hinge to be. I want it always to make sense which way the doors are supposed to rotate, so you can use that rotation tool to get them to flip around. Notice there it's set to block light now so that my light doesn't travel through those doors. And as you place doors, you realize you can't have a bedroom with two doors coming into it. Nobody wants that. So I'll end up defining bathrooms, closets, things like that. And I just want to make sure the layout all makes sense. I should be able to get to any part of the keep from any other part of the keep, unless I'm purposefully designing it otherwise. Here I've got a, a bad uh, handle there. I had to get rid of that. Just press the delete key when you hover over it. Oh, 
decided I don't want to be able to access the bedroom from the library. So I'm going to get my hex code back again, put down my wall, and make it a closet. This might be a Jack and Jill bathroom. I don't know, maybe I'll change that later. And here's where I will, again, use my special hex code, make it a little bit darker. And then if you type 90 into your rotation tool and hit enter, it'll rotate it. Um, if you type, if you wanna get rid of the rotation, you can't just delete it, you have to type zero and then hit enter and that'll rotate it back to the normal default. You will run into the problem of having controls on top of controls. You might have to move one out of the way in order to get to the, the uh, floor that you're trying to get to. And just doing a little bit of cleanup work here. You can see my rooms are starting to be defined. Now I'm just looking at the general layout, making sure that everything makes sense. Making sure that I'm not committing to something I don't want to commit to. Go ahead and complete that interior. I may break that up into multiple floors and rooms. I don't know that I want four fireplaces in one room, for example. Now I'm grabbing the hex code from these carpets down below. And also at level 100, I'm gonna select the carpet texture that's in the Forgotten Adventures asset pack. I'm gonna lay down carpet, snap to grid. Then I'm gonna do something else just to add a little bit more detail. I'm grabbing the stock blue, I think it's blue carpet, and then I'm changing it to white. And then I'm, I'm snapping the grid and then taking snap off so that I can just make a little runners along the side. And it's white, but it's also set to like 15% opacity. And so the net effect is it just creates a lighter color. And I think it looks good. It looks like a finished carpet. Now I've grabbed the carpet tool again, and I'm going to put a green carpet in the, in the library. And I'm going to fiddle with how much of the floor I cover. I'm going to try to stay consistent. And I'll basically play around with this for a little bit. Okay, so now we're at the place where I'm ready to start doing some custom stuff, more custom stuff. I'm operating at level 400. I have a wood texture selected. and I'm making custom bookshelves. And I'm trying to decide how I wanna make these things. And I'm trying to give them some, sh some more interesting shape than just rectangles, because I want this to feel like a nice library. And you'll notice I have the boards going vertically that direction. I was trying to snap to grid and it wasn't letting me. And all I'm doing is I'm playing around with the designs right now. 
that I can I can go change later. And as I play around with it, I start to land on a design that I like. And here I'm going to adjust the rotation so that those are vertical instead of horizontal. And now, but I've, I've got different design tactics here. So I'm going to go back and redo some of this. I am again using custom hex codes because maybe I want these bookcases to turn a, like a dark mahogany at some point in the future. Or maybe I want to lighten them. Well, I don't think I can lighten them much. You can really go darker. You can't you can't go lighter than the than the base texture that you're working with. But if I wanted to go lighter at some point in the future and I found a texture that was lighter, I could make all of these marble, for example, if I, if I wanted to make something really opulent. So there I've got the tops of these theoretical bookshelves. I'm going to adjust this one so it's got that curved aesthetic that I've started already. If you don't know how to draw a curve, you just hold down shift and click and it'll let you draw what's called this, I think it's called a spline. Now I'm gonna find that shadow tool that I've been using all along. Figure out the direction I wanna go. And I'm gonna do that same thing. I'm just gonna very carefully go around that curve and set my anchor points, pressing backspace if I mess up. And now I've made a nice little rounded top. And I'm gonna do that for all the other ones. It, there's a lot of bookcases inside of Forgotten Adventures, and you can just use those. But I just find if you just stack a bunch of rectangular bookcases together, it just doesn't look good. It doesn't look like how I, I imagine a really nice library would look. So I make my own. And now I'm going to grab, I, I type in wood, and I'm going to grab these little literally blocks and use them as building blocks to make it look like there's maybe some struts in the middle of this. You know, maybe these bookshelves, uh, you know, have some elements that that peek out. This is all just to create the illusion of some kind of manufactured uh, furniture. Now I'm going to grab some books, and I'm going to, as haphazardly as I can muster start putting books on bookshelves. Some will fit and I'm going to create some gaps and I'm going to fill those gaps with individual books. And this can be a little tedious, but it's, it's what it takes sometimes to make good things. Trying to randomize this as best as I can. Now I have a nice wall of books. And I may play around with the interior when I finally get to decorating this room. Try to put something interesting in there, like an interesting piece of furniture. Here I'm going to 
essentially fudge a ladder. So maybe this is a very high room and you have to get on a ladder to get up to these top shelves. So I just used, I, I did a search for um, ladder and this is normally used for a bed. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna invent a rail that this ladder might slide along. And I'm gonna use building blocks from the stair inventory to approximate a rail. If you hold down Z and rotate your mouse wheel, you can do slighter, slight rotations. So you can really get things rotated in the way that you want. Also, if you just place the object down and then rotate it freely with the hand tool, that will get you very, very fine precision. Now I'm gonna grab a piece of metal and I'm gonna make it look like this railing is attached to the bookshelf. It, it's really simple stuff. You might think it's crazy to try to put this in there, but I found that the, this level of detail really sets the map off. And now I'm operating at still level 400 now. I was doing some of the material work at level 300. Now I'm putting shadows above it. And what shadows do is they really they really merge this these bookshelves into the room. I put shelves, I put shadows above at about half width, and then I put shadows below at full width if I can. You'll notice it get you get that hedgehog hedgehog effect and it gets really spiky. You might have to shorten the width of your um, of your shadow path if that starts happening, because it's hard to go around turns without that spike effect happening. So see, I, I decreased it and I keep deleting it to try to keep those spikes from showing up. But see, now I've got a, a pretty good base. You know, I'll even put shadows around. Anything that has occupies physical space, I'll typically try to put a shadow around it. Just playing with the level that I'm laying it down at and the width of the shadow. And then notice the shadows I put on top of the bookshelf I had fading in and out, whereas the shadows that I put on the floor, uh, I did not, I don't typically fade those in and out unless I'm gonna end in the middle of the room somewhere. Now I'm just inventing something using the building blocks to make it look like maybe there's a roller base to that, to that ladder. And then I'm gonna put some shadow paths over it to make that ladder kind of blend in. Right? Maybe the light doesn't hit it the same way that it's hitting other things. But that gives me a nice base for a room that I can now decorate. Now, another thing I do in this stage is I put my um, mounted, you know, anything that's a fixture, I like to put those in. So I'll put, you know, lanterns around doorways. And then I'll put lights. Notice I, um, I think it was Sergeant Snarf that did a really good video on this. But you do high intensity, low range, and you can really make those fireplaces light up. And then you increase your range and drop your intensity. And that lets you light your room in a smart way. Instead of making things too bright or having light pouring out of a window where you don't necessarily want it pouring out. And then I'm going to make sure that I'm adding my shadow drama to other sort of plain vanilla spaces. Anywhere where there's just flat space where the light's just hitting it in, in a uniform way, I want to try to change that because that's how light works in real life affects every surface that it comes in contact with.
And now I'm going to finish doing my rooms. Now I may snap to grid in, for some rooms, but the light or the shadow will pour, will bleed underneath the wall in some cases. So I may turn snap to grid off when I need to. I'm also, um, I'm also turning on or off, transitioning in or out. Like there I'm transitioning to a fade because I wanna end before that light. And I wanna make it look like there's really light spilling out on the ground there. So I don't wanna cover it in shadow necessarily. Decided wood in a bathroom floor is never a good idea. So I'm grabbing that custom hex code again. I'm changing my, my floor tile, my floor texture. And there, I feel like that's really coming along. That's a good, really good foundation for uh, furnishing this place. Now, I, obviously I still have to design the walls and stuff for the interior and build in some surprises for you know plot devices and things like that but you know this is at least a pretty good overview of how i try to establish my foundation for whatever maps i'm building whether it's a, a ship or a or a room or a house even here i'm just trying to break up a otherwise mundane flat surface with some sort of lighting impact and that's it. Hope you guys liked it.